Hi there everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be discussing ophthalmia neonatorum, also known as neonatal conjunctivitis. This can be caused by several different perspective mechanisms. So if you want to learn more about this, then please stay tuned. One of the first key things to outline with respect to neonatal conjunctivitis is the fact that it must occur within the first 30 days of life. It is important and not to be missed because as well as the classic signs of conjunctivitis being redness and discharge, this can actually lead to perforation of the cornea, therefore scarring and permanent visual loss. Neonatal conjunctivitis is more common in certain parts of the world and the characteristic hallmark features will be discussed in this video. The three most common causes can be broken down into chemical, bacterial and viral. In this video, I will be focusing on the bacterial causes of neonatal conjunctivitis. In terms of the bacterial causes, there can be different bugs implicated, the most common being chlamydia, then you have gonorrhea, and gonorrhea can be very severe and can cause perforation and scarring, as can pseudomonas. Risk factors for developing neonatal conjunctivitis include a mother who is known to have any of the aforementioned bugs. If that mother is inadequately or poorly treated with medication, or if the child subsequently post birth has exposure to any of these particular bugs. Other risk factors also include premature rupture of membranes, trauma during birth, and also poor hygiene practices during delivery of the child. Neonatal conjunctivitis can look quite marked because the child is essentially still developing and they will have reduced tear secretion, reduced immune function, and they also have poor levels of IgA within their tears. As with everything in medicine, prevention is king, and therefore if a child in utero or during birth has been exposed or there's a concern about exposure, then they should receive systemic treatment. Through a careful history and examination and considering time frames, considering time frames is related to post-birth and the number of days old that the child is, one can confidently, in most cases, diagnose which agent it's likely to be, and this is confirmed with a laboratory diagnosis after sending off swabs. In terms of time frames, gonorrhea typically presents up to five days post-delivery, whereas chlamydia is between five and 14 days. These numbers can vary depending on the literature that you read. From the perspective of an eye doctor, it's important to carefully look at the cornea and use fluorescein light to check the integrity of the corneal surface. Worrying corneal features would be the presence of edema, the presence of an ulcer, the concern about possible perforation and then subsequent infections such as endophthalmitis. And if the cornea does perforate, then there's concerns about scarring and permanent reduction in vision. In terms of treating the condition, a washout may be performed to try and reduce the amount of discharge that is present and then the appropriate antibiotics will be commenced urgently. Patients with neonatal conjunctivitis are monitored very carefully to look for the features that I previously mentioned that are very worrying and potentially site-threatening. With an early diagnosis and swift treatment commencement, most patients do well. If you've liked this video about neonatal conjunctivitis, then please do give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and please do watch and share my videos. Thank you so much.